Hi, Tea Quilters. It is Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. It is about 6.58 or so p.m. So if you're watching this at any other time, just know that you are watching a upload of the live chat. So we got 10 people in already. Thank you all so much for waiting for me. Just trying to make sure I got my chat comments on. I'm trying something new. I'm actually using my phone today. So I'm hoping that it works out. And I will give other people a chance to get in. I just wanted to come in and get started. It's actually seven o'clock now. <laughs> it's amazing how fast the minutes go. So let's see if I have any chats before. Got Lorna Duquad. I can't really see your last name. It's kind of in a light spot on my screen. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Welcome to the chat. Got Karen Rowling from, she says, hello, Miss T. Hi, Karen. We got Anna Safar. She says, hello from Ohio. Got June Billing. Say hi, T and all. Hi, June. And then we've got Sandra Ingstram from Nashville. Hi, I just drove through Nashville on Friday and then coming back on Sunday. We've got Leetta Bryan here. She says hi, T and everyone. Judy Smith says hi, T and everyone. So if I butcher your names or say the wrong thing, I am a good distance from my camera, which has this little bitty text on it. Got uh, Wind Sprinter says hello, T and everyone from Maryland. LC, I think. Let's see if I can pull that back up. Says hello, all from Southern California, where it's been a beautiful rainy afternoon. We've had rain, but I wouldn't say it's been beautiful. Had like some wind in it. We've got Vicki Lemire, I think, says hello. Hi, Vicki. So, yeah. So. If you all have any quilt-related questions, please go ahead and put them into the chat box. As you can see, I'm in a different part of my long arm room. I have that charity quilt that I was supposed to, that I talked about last week of quilting, and I still haven't gotten it done. I need to get it done so I can take it to a retreat tomorrow. Am I packed for a retreat? Absolutely not. <laughs> I have, let's see, I'm in charge of the gifts for a retreat. So kind of like almost at every meal, if you can, we, we, we donate, we don't donate, we pay $25 to whomever is in charge of gifts. So I have, it's eight of us going on retreat. And so I had $200. And then we added another day. We usually only do retreat Saturday, all day Saturday, all day, all day Friday, all day Saturday. And then we leave Sunday before dinner time so around 3 4 p.m and so we try to give a little small token gift with each meal so then this year we added an extra day so now we're doing we're going to start thursday at lunch and so i had to get gifts so i got the gifts packed <laughs> and then we also have to provide one meal so i made my meal so i have it ready to take and that's all I have done is my meal and the gifts. <laughs> Nothing else. No projects. We have some organized projects that we normally do. I have none of that scheduled. So, or none of that packed. So I don't even know if I'm participating in that. But I want my goal to be to get binding on these four charity quilts. So that's what I am focusing on right now. I got three of them quilted and I just need to get this last one quilted. So let's see who else came into the chat room. See, we've got Brenda Jackson. She says, hi, T. Brenda from Long Island, New York. Hi, Brenda. June Hansen, say hi, Miss T and everyone. Srivia Henderson says, hello, quilt family. Don Cunningham's here. She says, 
Do you do any pantographs? And if so, what is the largest size you can use? I know your throat is 22 inch gamut. The machine itself is a 22 inch gamut. And then what you can actually quilt is decrease because you have the rod inside of it as well. And then you also have the front of the machine that hits this front bar here. So actually it decreases a lot. So, um, but I would say if you're doing hand guided, I probably wouldn't go any larger than a 22 because I find sometimes that the reach back here can be a little far if I'm trying to do detail work or specific patterns. So I do like the 22 inch. So you don't really get 22 inches of space. And then it depends on the type of batting that you use. When you're using polyester batting that fluffs like what I'm doing on these charity quilts, you actually, every roll, every time you roll your quilt top, you're going to be losing more available quilt space. So I can, I don't have any ruler that's long enough right here. Hmm. I don't have any long rulers right here. I have to go on the other side of the machine. So let me go do that. So just an estimate on size, I would say I can do like 16, 17 inches of stitching. And my goal was to get a machine that would at least do 12 or 14 inch blocks. So that's why I have this particular size. And now I'm just going to toss my ruler over here on the floor <laughs> and pray I don't forget. <laughs> Okay. Karen Rowling says, don't feel bad about the packing. I am going to Fullerton tomorrow morning and just finished my packing a few minutes ago. All right. And I don't have to be there until around noon tomorrow. So... Oh, I said 22 feet. She's laughing at me. I'm sorry about that. I meant 22 inches of throat space. Sorry. It's been, um, I was not expecting my May to be a busy month and it's been busier than uh, March and April. Okay. I've, I've been struggling. I haven't even been into the tea quilts so along to even give instructions out. I've been so busy. Miss J.A. Coleman says, hello to you and everyone from Maryland. Hi, welcome to chat. Haven't seen you in a bit, I think. Got Cheryl Land here. She says, hi, quilt family. Claudette Bettis is here. She says, hi, from Anaheim, California. And while I'm on Claudette, before she leaves, because she left last time, I was talking with uh, Kevin, the quilter, and we were talking about coming to that African quilt show. I've got it over there by my computer. And he was saying, is it a big show? Because it's only one day. He was asking me how large is the quilt show. Can you give some more information about that? Please. <laughs> and then we've got Melinda Carroll. She says, hello, Tan, everyone. Thumbs up. Thank you, Melinda. She's telling everybody to hit that thumbs up button. Linda DeVito says, so glad I... Got you at the beginning. Welcome from Rockaway, New Jersey. Hi, Linda. Susan Glenn is here, says, hi, Miss T. Hi, Susan. I know you all only can see part of my head, but I'm trying to see the text. <laughs> um, Let's see. Um, Maxie Doodle says, hi, T. How was jury duty? <laughs> I was lucky. <laughs> I went to jury duty. We had about, I'd say around 300 to 325 people that were in the pool. The first group, they pulled 46 people. The next group was like 32 people. And then the third group was 50 people and I was number 24. 
And then since I was number 24, I had to wait for them to corral the other 26 people and get them into position. And then we had to go up to the courtroom. So we had to take elevators individually and some of us took the stairs. So by the time we got up there, he said he was going to give us paddles and we were going to sit in number order and enter the court. And it ended up, we just walked into the courtroom with no paddles and not sitting in numer numerical order. And the judge came into the room and we didn't even have to stand. So I thought that was kind of weird. And she didn't even have her robe on. But she then told us that the parties had come to a, an agreement and that our services were not going to be needed for that case. This was the first day on Monday. Normally, you go to jury duty two days, so this is the first time this ever happened to me. And after she made a speech thanking us for coming and not trying to weasel out of it, per se, she uh, discharged us because she said that our services weren't needed. So we were done. So I was really, really happy. I'd say it was probably about 1230 when I actually got out. So it was a good good thing, and I didn't have days to spend uh, with jury duty as well because I has, have so much going on, and then knowing that I was going on retreat. Also trying to get my car registered because I hate temporary tags, so I was trying to get that taken care of. I was also selling my other car, so I've been now this week living at the DMV, the driver licensing, uh, licensing place. So, still been a busy week. Haven't done anything at home. I haven't even packed from the weekend of going away. <laughs> but I'm glad jury duty turned out fantastic. We got Remo says, J.S. says, hello, hi. Welcome to chat. Um, yep, settled out of court. Don says, no, I typed 22 feet. I meant 22 inches. Okay. I'm glad it wasn't me because I've been having some rough weeks here, girl. Uh, congratulations on your jury blessings. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And Claudia said, it is a fairly big show with several categories, vendors, live music, and demonstrations. Okay. So he was just asking me for some more information because I think it's the same weekend as... Houston, and I think he almost want to go to Houston. So we're going to talk about it some more, and we'll decide what we're going to do. I, I want to come to California because I've never been to California. Houston is great. I do love Houston, and either one is a win-win for me, so it wouldn't matter. I see Francesca just came in. She says, hello, Tian, all good to see you. Thank you so much. Um, What else do I have to tell you? Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so lucky. The state of Illinois, they really love me. I got a speeding ticket on the way back home. That happened in, on Sunday. <laughs> so I got caught in. I was using the Waze app, which is supposed to tell you when there are police out there. But it just let me ride right past a cop. And the highway was pretty busy at that point. I was almost home. I was about maybe 40 miles out from home. And so the traffic was a little heavy, so I think the app just got a little confused. So, yeah, so I got to deal with that as well because I'm not going to take a ticket on my license. You know, I got to fix that. So that one was not a good thing. But, hey, you know, I don't let anything get me down because I've learned through all my years of living and all the stuff I've been through that there can be something else worse happening to you. So... It's just money. You know, you just fork out some more money. Thank God I'm able to do what I need to do. So, you know, because if you don't pay a ticket, you're going to end up paying more money trying to negotiate the ticket. So, um, yeah, but thank God I'm able to do that. So I'm never, I, I did not make it, uh, ha make me have a bad day. I didn't treat the people around me horrible because it happened. You know, I just keep a living because there's so many other things that could go wrong in your life. So, always blessed for where I am. I'm blessed for the fact that, uh, like, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I may have been struggling to take care of this ticket. So, I'm glad I'm not in that predicament. So, 
Peggy O'Connor is here. Hi, Peggy. She says, hi, T and Quilters. Diane57 is here, says, hi, T. I'm here. Hi, Diane. Hi, Peggy. Welcome to the chat. Now, I'm going to be quilting, and then I'll come back and lift this up. And Karen says, God may have been protecting you from a terrible accident ahead of you. And, I, you know, I believe all of that. So, you know, I'm never ungrateful for whatever's happening to me, no matter what it is. I know everything in life can be worse, up to and including death. So I have a good perspective. I'm always looking for the positive of everything. So I do believe so thank you so much and i'm gonna go ahead and just tilt you down just a little bit and it's gonna be a little jerky here so bear with me and i've never done this before so trying to make sure that you can see the majority of the quilt and you can't even see the quilting here you probably can see a little bit of the lightness but i'm just doing wavy lines freehand wavy lines so no big deal here. You all can go ahead and chat in the comment section. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go down. It's only going to take me about four minutes. If that, I'm going to go down and then come back up with wavy lines. Okay? So I'm going to just slide down. I've already done about six of them just to get started. But just easy waves. And that's all this quilt's going to get. And I'm going to just stop here because after I started quilting, I realized that somebody asked me if I do pantos in the chat box. Yes, I do do pantos. I got a lot of long arm machine quilting quilts. I got a category for long arm quilting in action, I think it's called. And I have all of those in there. If I'm doing a panto, I, I show you the panto on paper. And then I will quilt it out, show it to you on the quilt top. And then I tell you who it's by and where you can get it from so yes i do use pantos now i'm gonna go ahead and stand up so i can read the chat box <laughs> uh sandra says lovely quilt it's one of the t quilters quilts uh it's one of the charity quilts i'm trying to get my four completed so that i can um get these d submitted definitely before my birthday and then i want to and i gave the other ones to my group of friends so i'm hoping that they're going to get theirs done but not they'll be done before december and diane says 22 inches of what a throat space in the gamma long arm machine diane francesca says is this one of t's quilts it's one of t quilters quilts one of the T-Quilts community quilts that we donated the blocks to last year. And June says, I like your idea how to quilt it. We'll try it next on mine. Each one of them I have done, I've quilted a different just so that they all didn't look the same. I've done loops on one, meandering on one, spirals on one. And this one I'm just doing straight ravy lines because it's going to be quick. Linda says, T, can you program your design or do you have to 
do only freehand. Yes, this is not a computerized long arm machine. I did not buy a computerized machine. And Francesca says she's still working on her Christmas scrap quilt. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I have and I have to apologize because I was not again expecting to not upload for the month of May in the tea quilt so along, but you will definitely get your quilt done before December. Uh, a lot of them don't have that many steps. So I will be trying to work on that. Hopefully next week I have I actually have sort of kind of a job interview next week. It's kind of weird. It's quilt related, but it may or may not foster. So I'm not going to tell you about it, but I got a lot of things going on. I also have to, you know, do phone calls about my ticket that I got. So I'm going to be a little busy next week or, I sh you know, I'm actually a lot busy. It's just all in a matter of what I'm putting my time to. So I'm hoping that I can start working on the instructions for the next part. Some of those quilts is kind of you understood what your next part is. So if you are going wanting to go ahead and sew ahead, please go ahead and do so. I'm sorry for holding you up. I thought I was going to have the next parts uploaded like the first or second week in May, and that has not happened. So sorry about that. I just want to make sure I apologize for that. And... Uh, Diane says, I like to do this on my home machine. Yes, and that's where I got this from. I used It's called the serpentine stitch, but it's very tight. And what I do, I would extend the stitch length so that it wasn't tight anymore. And I've been using this stitch for years, at least 20, 25 years at least. And Don says, you do have a positive attitude, one of the many things we all love about you. I really try because... I don't want to be stressed out. <laughs> and so anything that can talk me out of being stressed is the way that I go. And Diane says, I thought I recognized the block on the corner. Okay. And then, did you make this quilt or are you just quilting it? That's, that's Don. I see your metal bars. I saw a YouTube video where someone add little wooden doorknobs to the hole, said it was easier to grasp off the bar. You know, I've been thinking about putting, um, they're not hard to get off the bar. What it is, is that if they snap together, you could hurt your finger. So you got to be careful because they come off on and off pretty easily. So I want to put muslin, make a muslin sleeve for them so that it'll be easier for me to use them so they won't be, uh, it gives me something to grip as well as it won't scratch up my rails. That's what I want. So I want the casing so that the metal doesn't scratch up my rails. It's not bad. It doesn't look like anything's on them now. But if I look really hard, I can find a little scratch here or there, but nothing major. But yeah, but the doorknob handles are a good idea. But what I want is something that won't scratch my rails. <laughs> uh, Linda says, are pantos hard to do? Uh, could you possibly show how to use them? I already have videos up showing you how to do a panto. I've shown you where... I'm quilting, and I can't remember the exact video. I'll try to find it and maybe link it in the comment section. So, Linda, after this video go live, leave another comment for me because I'm telling you, I'm going to forget, okay? So, and then I will link you. I'll go find the actual video for you where I'm showing you. I got two cameras. One camera is showing you the front that's stitching, and then I have another camera showing you where I'm following the red line, the laser line on the panto. So I'll try to link that for you, but I can't remember the name of it because it's been so long ago. <laughs> and let's see what else before I start back quilting here. Diane says, job interview. Wonder what that is. I'm crazy. That's what I am. Linda says she can't pack because everything is packed away for the move. I hope your move is safe. How so? First week on the market. Wow, that's awesome, but it does give you a dilemma on where to live. 
until you get things in order. So, yes. Congratulations on selling the house, though. So, we're going to do a couple more lines here. And I'm doing them about an inch to an inch and a half apart, however it falls. Go down and back one more time. So now I have quilted about 16 inches on this quilt. And so I'm going to go ahead and roll it now. And so I'm just going to go down, take all the bars off, and then take my side rails off, which you can't see. And I'm actually floating this quilt top. So that's why I have the bars on here for those that don't know what I'm doing. And so now I'm just going to roll. I still have my needle in a down position because 
if I'm stitching to the edge, I don't have to necessarily take the needle out. I'm just going to roll the machine with the needle down. Then the next thing that I do, I have this tape on here and it tells me where the edge of my quilt is. It's got a little twisted here in the batting. That's the reason why I don't like polyester bat. I like uh, cotton bats because polyester does get caught. And so then I come back to, I have little uh, like binder clips on here. And then I put my edge to the binder clip and then I pin it. Hoping you all can hear me. And then I take one of my metal pieces and hold that in place. And then I do the same thing on this side. I pull it to the edge where my binding binder clip is. That's my marking for where my quilt should be so that I know it's rolling square. Put a pin in it to hold it. And then I put one of the metal clips on. To hold it in position then I just go and make sure that everything is down since I'm using a polyester bat that's pretty thick I do pull it just a little bit I don't pull it a lot so that it will pucker I just pull it just a tad and then I put the remaining bars in the middle I've got stickers on here from block numbers, so I'm going to take those off. This masking tape's been on here a while now. <laughs> and then I actually... Um, my husband, he just got in the video, y'all. <laughs> Come up for being nosy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is the, it's taking me a minute to get the tape off. And then after I get the tape off, then I'll stitch my sides down. I'll base my side edges down. I always take the tape off before I start stitching, before I stitch, because then I'll forget and be in the middle of stitching something and see the tape. So give me just a minute, and then I'll also come back and read any comments as well once I stitch my sides down. This tape's been on here a while. It's refusing. Okay, and when I go to baste, I do mean that I'm basting, so I actually put it on a basting stitch. The reason why I baste is because if I'm stitching and it needs a little bit more room so that it's not puckered along the edge, then those basting stitches will move. And I'm basting at a quarter inch. 
I'm basting at a quarter inch. I must have hit the tide off by mistake. <laughs> and then this is a pin that I had from the previous place when I held it. So I just stick it down at the end. And I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just using my hand to smooth out the edge while I baste it. Just to make sure everything stay in place. And like I said, on polyester thick bats, this is harder to do than if I had um, just cotton batting. Because the hopper foot wants to get caught in the polyester batting. And then I just tie that off. <clears throat> And now I'm going to go down and baste the other edge. So now I'm just putting my side rails back on. I am using leader grips. I actually use leader grip system to install. And this is the bag that they are stored in. So you can kind of see a little bit of it. But I bought the leader grips for just two rails instead of three because I float my top so I didn't need the third one. So I have it on my back. My back is hooked up to my leaders with the leader grips. And it takes a lot, it's a lot quicker to do that over pinning. So now let me go back and read some of the comments. Let me see if I can tilt up without causing any trouble here. Just a little. <laughs> So let me see comments here. Um, okay, Miss J.A. Coleman says, is that the same machine you use to quilt the t-shirt quilt, motorcycle quilt? Yes, it is. And I think Diane said that she answered it. She says, I can answer it for you. Yes, and I do, like I do a, I like, I have a panto that's like a chevron that I really like instead of doing meandering on my t-shirt quilts, but it's the same machine. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. That's from Sharon Martin. Thank you so much. She says, for all the hard work she has done for us, thank you so much. <laughs> Like, share, and subscribe, please. Yes, I'm still trying to get to 10,000 uh, subscription or subscribers, not subscription, subscribers. So please share with your quilting groups, with your quilting friends, please. I don't even know what number I'm at now because I haven't even had time to look. People are congratulating Linda on selling her house, wanting to know what city and state she's moving to. Sorry to keep picking your brain. Could you computerize your long arm <laughs> yes i can computerize my long arm if you have the gamma 18 inch that one you cannot computerize but if you get the vision 2.0 then yes you can go back later and computerize it um it will cost quite a bit of money there are other companies like uh, if you if I go through Gamble, I think it's somewhere around twelve to 
It depends on which one I buy because they got the Elevate software as well as the Statler. If I get the Statler, that can be very expensive. It can be like maybe eighteen to twenty thousand, and I think the Elevate is somewhere around eleven to twelve thousand. So it's a lot of money, but there are a lot of um, secondary markets that are making quilt software like Cubot and stuff like that. So I haven't decided if I want to do it. I think it would be beneficial because I can quilt while I'm doing something else. But on the flip side, I like to see what my what's quilting so that I can know where the mistakes are if I need to pull something out or go back and like if my thread ran out, I know exactly what happened. So it's all a matter of preference. <clears throat> And Diane is saying the same thing I just said about being expensive. Don says, T, how long do you stand before you need a break? <laughs> um, um, most of the time I'm quilting. If I quilt in the middle of the night, I can go about an hour or so before I just go sit down for a little bit. I might read some emails or, or read some of the comments on my YouTube channel. If it's during the daytime, I get so many distractions with the men. Sometimes I babysit my daughter's dog. Um, I have, to, you know, trying to eat. Um, telephone ringing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I do get interruptions. So I don't really time it during the day. But at night, I try to make sure. I put on a little bitty TV so I know when a show is going off. Then I know I need to go take a break. So I do take breaks. When I was using other people's machines, I would go over sometimes after work, and I would sew for like four hours straight. I might stop and eat dinner midway through, and then because I was using somebody else's machine, and I was trying to get two or three quilts done in one evening. So, yeah, I don't even do that kind of sewing here because I got it to myself, and I don't have to worry about holding up somebody else's machine. Claudette, uh, let me go back and make sure... We've got <laughs> Sandra saying, hi, Mr. T. <laughs> uh, uh, he was quick. Yes, he was. He saw that he saw this camera over here and he saw that he was in the camera. He's in his work uniform. Claudette says, what stitch length do you use? It depends. I mostly use 12. But if I'm doing something detailed, like uh, small stippling like i'm trying to use it as a background field and i might go up as high as like 15 stitches per inch uh, it just depends on what i'm doing if it's a small space i tend to put if i'm doing something like a small pattern somewhere then i will increase that stitch length so that i got more stitches in there so that that pattern is more noticeable if it's something that's large then i just go ahead or a regular size i just go ahead and go with 12 stitches per inch And Claudette, what kind of long arm do you have? I forgot. Do you have the 10 Lizzie? I can't remember. Miss J.A. Coleman said, what are pantos and how do they work? I moved all of my pantos from over here. <laughs> They're actually on the other side of the machine. Um, uh, look at some of my videos. I can't recommend that. But I don't have any of them over here. I do have one on the machine, so maybe... Before we end, I'll take you all off of this. I can't even tell what time it is on there. So it's 7.43. So maybe I'll take you off. It's going to be jerky when I take you off. And then I'll show you a panto that I got on the bed. Susan says, man, I'm so jelly. Would love to have a long arm. When I said something to my husband, he just gave me the stink eye. <laughs> my husband did too, but... And the reason why was because he didn't want me to take what he considers to be his man cave, which is my basement storage. <laughs> so, and it is finished. So he didn't want to give up that space. And even when I got the long arm, I tried to have him move to a different room in the house. And then I would take the area that he's in because most of it is my storage anyway. But he didn't want to move. So I'm like, okay. So my machine's here. <laughs> so I'm okay long as I got it. At first I was thinking, well, then I won't get one. Then I'm like, no, I am going to get it. So 
Where did you put the tape? Where did you put the tape there? Why did you put the tape there? Oh, the tape was the numbers on the blocks for tea quilters. When I showed their blocks, I gave everybody a number so that they would know which quilt, which one of the quilt numbers their blocks were in. And then I showed them and it was amazing because people actually picked their blocks out of the quilts. I had a block chart that I showed them as well. And then I showed them the actual quilt top. That's why I had tape on them. <laughs> Miss J. A. Coleman says, I would love a long arm too. Sharon says, my husband has a similar reaction. <laughs> ah. Okay, thank you, Susan. She says, I have 9,256 subscribers. I had done like a... Um, I forgot one of... It's uh, one of those websites that will estimate when you reach 10,000 subscribers and it had me down for May of 2019, but it may or may not happen in May. It may end up being later. But, you know, when I was doing that, I always tell you all that March, April are my busiest month, so I don't upload as much. I am still in the process of editing videos that I've recorded. I'm up to, I'm, my next video Friday will be a premiere video, 7 p.m., even though I'm at retreat. And we, I'm going to do the IQF haul, the stuff that I bought from IQF, International Quilt Festival that was in Rosemont, Illinois. And then I think the next video I get to edit when I come back home would be a quilt tour studio. So I'm hoping to start working on that when I come back Maybe start on it on Memorial Day because my phone shouldn't be ringing on Memorial Day, maybe. So start editing that video. And it just takes a while for my long videos to upload. Sometimes they can take, you know, a day and a half to two days. I just don't know why my, my upload is so slow here. But if I have a short video, then it might take, if it's 10 minutes, then I can probably get it up in an hour or two hours. But if it's over 10 minutes, it just takes forever. And my quilt show videos are an hour long or more. And sometimes my studio videos can be around 30 minutes. So I'm hoping that I can start working on that next week as well. So I do have a lot of videos planned for you guys that have already been recorded. I'm just so behind on uploading. Um... When Sprinter says, T, that was a great demonstration. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Pantos are simply drawings of patterns she wants to use. It goes down the length of the machine on a sh shelf of the frame, and she just follows the pattern with either a laser or a pointer. Very correct. Eric is in the house now. He's saying hello, everyone, hoping everyone is safe. Yes, thank you so much. And thanks some of my tea quilters that were asking about me in the Facebook group, tea quilters Facebook group. So if you're not a member over there, please go over there and join as well if you have a Facebook account. We basically had tornado warnings that lasted for like five hours. So it was like different bands of them were sweeping through our area. Thank goodness all we had was rain with high winds in my area. Other parts of the same part of my city like a different county in st louis might have uh fared a little differently so um do you sell user time on your machine no but if somebody wanted to i would i just don't on my long arm i don't do a whole lot of advertising if someone wants me to quilt for them then i will quilt for them if someone wants to borrow my machine, I will let them borrow my machine. But the only thing that I don't do because I have my own charity things that I do every year is I don't quilt for Quilt of Valor. And I hate that. I will donate blocks here and there, but I don't do any actual quilting for them because I know they're looking for someone that can do one or two quilts a month. And I can't, I can't like tell them that I can do that and then I have these crazy months that have just happened to me and then I can't do them and then I feel bad because I didn't get it done. So since it's just me running a, a one owner business, 
uh, self-employed. I I don't do that, but I do I do donate blocks when I can. We got Joyce Rockamore here from Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Joyce. Looks like Patricia Halder is here. She says hello from Simi's, Alabama. Is that what that is? Simi's, Alabama. I was just in Alabama. And I got to see my niece while I was there. She just moved to uh, part of Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And uh, Claudette's got the HQ-16. Thank you, Claudette, for sharing. I just couldn't remember. Helen Thomas says, hello, T and everyone. Uh, <laughs> Eric says, I don't remember my number. Uh, me either. <laughs> And I don't know if I've seen your block in here or not. And I just pulled off some numbers, too. <laughs> but it's been a while. But when I first did them, you all remembered your numbers. And Diane says she thinks that all the husbands has that stink eye reaction. And then Eric's being, he's being typical Eric. He says, hey, June, your month is coming up. <laughs> And she said, yes, it is. And it's my birthday month. Well, happy birthday, June. It's coming up soon. Enjoy. Celebrate the entire month. <laughs> Elizabeth Young is here. She says, hi, T. I've been away for quite a while, but glad to see you again. Welcome back. Share with your friends. Try to get me to 10,000 subbies. Of course, we're going to have to have some kind of a drawing for that we got sandra weston she says hello from maryland hi sandra and then andre Banks says i've tried long arm once i didn't like it <laughs> i think by the time you do all the pinning and then long arm while it's faster and less cumbersome than sewing on your home machine when you start to have problems with um machine when you start to have problems with um tension tension then you really it can be frustrating and it's not a fun time then but when i mostly quilt if i'm quilting on the same type of fibers once i set the tension like i went from this quilt i quilted that last spiral quilt so i didn't even have i went from this quilt i quilted that last spiral quilt so i didn't even have to do any attention to do any attention adjustments i already had the same batting about the same backing so i didn't have to do a whole lot so it was pretty easy to do a whole lot so it was pretty easy <laughs> he said he wasn't used to it. here again sorry <laughs> carrie kathy verge she's from california on no ontario canada i'm sorry <laughs> and you haven't been here for a while she was in here a lot and she even donated to the tea quilts blocks if i'm not mistaken um Christine says, I need to rewatch the earlier portion that I missed. So, yeah. So, um, let's see, what time is it? It's 7.52. It'll probably take me about an hour to finish this off camera, but I at least wanted to get started on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and take you all off the frame. I'm going to go around and show you the panto that's on here for the question that was asked. So, <laughs> I think I'll just take you off and take the whole stick. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! <laughs> Y'all know I'm crazy when I'm slap happy, right? <laughs> Whenever I drive on a highway for long trips, I could sleep all the time. Hold on. I got a mess everywhere. I had to pick up that ruler so I wouldn't step on it. I'm glad I remembered. Okay. I'm going to go all the way to the end because I have my mat on here. And I don't know the name of this. I think it's called ground cover. And I can't see what you're looking at. So let me try to pull you up. So this is a panto, and you see the red marks here. And I know it's crooked, but I got 
but I got to see what you're looking at. <laughs> I'm on, I'm actually using my phone today. And maybe what I can do, let's see. Let's see if I can turn this around. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So it works, but you're going to see my arm because of the device it's on. Okay, so here is a red line. This lets me know between here and the red line up here, that's where the highest parts of my pattern are. So you mark those points. Some patterns come with it marked, and some of the older ones like this one, you had to mark them yourself. So you just use the red pen and mark your line so you know where your repeat was. And then um, when I line up my quilt, this is going to be one quarter of an inch. This red line is one quarter of an inch on the inside of my quilt top so that I don't stitch into the seam allowance. So then you stitch, so you'd have a laser light. So I normally stitch from, le from right to left. So when I'm stitching, I have a laser light and the laser light on the machine trails and tells me where to stitch. And I'm actually stitching blindly when I'm doing that, because I don't, the front of them, I'm at the back of the machine doing this, not the front. And I have many videos of me showing you long arm designs. So then the laser light, I'm just following it with the back of my machine. And right there is the machine. And you see where I have the handles on the back. I have a handle on this side as well as on the left side. And I'm standing on the left side of the machine. The handle you're seeing is the right. And then this pattern will end up being on top of the quilt when it's quilted up here through the needle. There is a way that you can do pantos from the front and have it laid on the front of your machine and then quilt as well. And since we are here, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. You can see some of these little wavy lines that I've been quilting tonight. Just to let you know that they are working here since I'm back here. <laughs> but yeah. So I let me go through and make sure no one else has any questions about this. And I'm real close and personal now. <laughs> And Kathy says, I've been watching your recorded videos. Life is busy. I understand. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching those. She says, that's weird. Video is doing replay. Really? <laughs> this is my first time using my phone. I could have hit something and hit a bad button. Oh, my gosh. And then Don says, thanks for doing this video and showing the panto. You're so welcome. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and end here. I can't even tell what time it is. I've got a crazy. So it's 7.57. <laughs> and I have you all on a stand. Let me... <laughs> like I said, I'm using my phone. And this is one of those clip um, things where I can clip it just about anywhere but not really <laughs> so yeah so i can't see if we got let me see if we got any more comments eric says hi t how do you store your or keep track of your pantos you probably got a spreadsheet yes i do <laughs> i actually have a spreadsheet and I'm trying to get this thing to show and it just dropped down. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can just take this off. I decided to start uploading more videos. And now I'm playing my do... own videos on YouTube. Just a minute, guys. I'm going to take you off and put on my, um, my holder. Sorry. Okay, guys. I'm Hopefully, I'm back. <laughs> I can hold it better with the little fob holder on the back now. Um, what I store them in. Let me flip the camera again. 
how to record videos and some remember when i told you i had switch out storage units here so that i can get these ikea storage beginner at learning i'm still playing myself well so please bear with me just stop it sorry guys okay so what i do is i have rulers in here i normally have my small rulers in here they're not in here because i had them out for another trip that i took and i saw in a hotel room so they're not in there these are more rulers put my mats in here my um i put what is that um <laughs> sandpaper so that i can draw so that i if i keep my board in the other i have a sanding board and so then i keep sandpaper in here so if i'm drawing lines here i have it and then this is where i keep my pantos and i try to keep them by category so i kind of have like uh uh like feathers all together geometrics all together so then they're in the remaining drawers here and I do have a spreadsheet so that I don't buy the same panto again. And I don't necessarily list them by which drawers in because I don't have but a few. So this is the last one. And this is my book that has the printout of the panto. So if a customer comes in and they're picking out a panto, I've got a mess, guys, because I haven't cleaned up in three months. So forgive my work area. This is what I'm working with, okay? <laughs> And so then I have a panto directory so that they can see. And then I know the design name and types and things, who it's by before I even touch the panto. So I do this in Excel as well. And then I sort them by category. Uh, no, the, this is the list by alphabetical, by design name. Sorry, this is by design name. So I just pop that right on top. I even have some golden threads paper here that's kind of old because I don't use it a lot, but it's still usable. It's kind of like a thinner tissue paper, so if I needed to mark something and then quilt it, I got that as well. And I can't remember what's in the last drawer. Let's see. These are my stencils. Some of my stencils. And then I have a few of my long arm rulers in here as well. This is... Uh, I think it's Dusty Ferrell's, let me see what he call it, Scully. That's the Scully by Dusty Ferrell. So, yeah. So that's what's in there. <laughs> ah! Let's see if I got any more questions while I was doing all that maneuvering. I know you guys been laughing at me, but that's okay. <laughs> Bye, Sharon. I hope I got you in time. Good night, Christine. And uh, Eric says he loves Scully. I haven't used it a whole lot, so I just need to get with it. Most of the time I'm doing ruler work is either circles or my straight line rulers. So I need to use that a little bit more. <laughs> Diane says not laughing at me. Okay. Orna says bye. Bye-bye. See you next week. And, yeah, we should most definitely be here next week. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I'm going to go ahead and finish with this quilt cool top. And then maybe tomorrow I will pack for a retreat <laughs> before, before it's time to go. Who knows? I'll be at retreat, though. I know that. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. And again, please thumbs up the video, and please share my channel with your quilting friends so that I can get to 10,000. I'm real close now. So I would really, really like to see that happen during the month of June. So please share, share, share. See you all next time. Bye, everybody.